Hey guys, this is Serena and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on my first bag. I'm using a pattern I found on Etsy of a round bag. It's kind of a vintage inspired purse. However, I would like to move the handle and change up the construction a bit to look more like a Samsonite hat bag luggage type of thing or even the hair dryer that I usually use as a prop in my pictures. Um, this video will be a tad bit different than my usual behind the scenes video because I will be sewing and talking in real time instead of doing a voiceover for the entire video because at the time of recording, I wasn't sure how this bag was gonna turn out and I was planning on releasing this video whether it was a pass or fail. So I carry you guys along for the ride while I mentally make plans that I don't necessarily keep and kind of problem solve and figure out. So I hope you enjoyed this style video. Please let me know in the comment section if you do and maybe I can continue to make them like this. Thank you so much. Okay, so I am currently grasping at straws to create this piece. The first alteration I've done to the pattern so far is to change the zipper panel from two of these side by side to a wider um, section and then a thinner section because the original would have had the zipper going straight down the center but I want a handle on the center so I have to offset the zipper. So that's what I'm gonna do now and then I'm gonna attempt to sew the zipper down with a half inch seam allowance. If it's too thick, I am going to cut off the seam allowance and then just leave the edges raw since it won't fray. I do not have enough fabric to mess this up. Um, I can't replace it. So I am going to do it on scrap from a, a zipper that I often use for muslins. That's why there's threads hanging out of it. I use this over and over for muslins. And so I'm gonna see how this sews down and what adjustments I have to make to my machine to get a decent stitch and just experiment with stitches and stitch widths and things like that so I get the desired look if it's possible. So that seemed to work just fine, which means I'll be able to sew it on the fold and it will work. So that's what I'm going to do. So to start, I'm going to stitch to the ending point on each side of the zipper because it's going to be closed on each end, like most purses. And then we'll do the same thing over here. The instructions have you based. I'll show you what I mean. So the instructions have you based in between here to apply the zipper, but that's not gonna be ideal considering this isn't going to heal if I sew through it. So I'm gonna have to come up with an alternative. So I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys, I am freaking out because I do not like top stitching fabrics that I can't feel the bottom of. Like I like to be able to feel the zipper teeth underneath my finger. That helps me guide and judge that everything's straight. And I can't really do that since it's double and big. But I'm trying my best. So I feel like this bag will either come together in a wonky way or it'll be a complete fail. Since it's my first one, I think I would be okay if it was like wonky but still cute in pictures. 
but ultimately I would love if it just looked cute in general and I feel like that's having high hopes but look I always try And all I've lost out of this deal, if it doesn't work, is scrap fabric. So that's usually what motivates me to try these difficult, well, not difficult, but like out of the box projects for myself. Experimental projects, if you will. It's pretty much because like, I don't have nothing to lose but time in this project. Which my time is valuable. But I can already tell this top stitching is slightly off, um, which you wouldn't be able to tell from pictures. And um, here's where I messed up. I thought I had gl glue, like the regular glue stick, and I don't. So I can't pin this. I don't have double stick tape or glue. So yeah, this is how the first one went down. Um, and then I will fold this over, do the same on the other side. And I did some really tight stitches, but we'll see. So this is one of those, tell me you don't follow directions without telling me you don't follow directions. <laughs> because I am having to just make up things as I go. I just move, mess up the stitch. Um, because I accidentally took the needle out of the fabric. But like I said, this um, project is very unforgiving. You cannot go back and take stitches out so we gonna have to live with whatever mistakes I make but I will say not too bad for not too bad for um the fact that I don't have the materials that I need, um, that I thought I had, but you know what? This is a sewing room project if ever there were any. Um, my second set of stitches are always closer to the zipper in like any project that I do like this. So I don't know, like I said, Possibly a hot mess. First bag, and of course I do alterations. And don't have all the supplies I need, but I'll be proud because creating this bag would mean that I'm capable of making it better. Like just being able to make it imperfectly the first time would mean I'm capable of making it in general, and that's all I need to know. And a lot of times that's what keeps me going when I make things. It's like, all I need to know is that I can do it. Like my first hat, it was a hot mess, but I just needed to know that I was capable of making a hat and then look at where I am now. This is the panel on so far. Oops, sorry. This is the panel so far. Not perfect, but not awful. 
it opens, it does what it's supposed to do. So now it is time to sew on the sides. And so here we go. Okay, so the bottom of this is, has this cover because I had to use a different color vinyl for the bottom. I ran out of white, so I went ahead and used the main fabric for the bottom, but it won't touch any surfaces because I have purse feet for it. So what I'm going to do is use this tiny awl that I have um, and poke a hole. This is actually, I forgot what they call it. I think like a stiletto. It's not actually no, but that's what we're going to use it for. <laughs> we're going to stick a hole in there then we're going to stretch it with our scissors like really sharp scissors um you just want to stretch the hole you don't really want to cut it since i am using regular fabric for the main fabric and then stick your purse foot in there and then put this through and the instructions have you use like an interfacing for this but because I'm using a rigid fabric I didn't want to use an interfacing but what I do plan on doing is cutting like a thin piece of uh, plywood to use as uh, to give it stability and uh, make it a little bit more rigid and I'm gonna slide that in between the lining and the purse at the end if I find that it's necessary um, you could use like a thick really stable cardboard and I'll just have to assess the um the need which one whenever I am done so I don't know at this very moment what will be necessary but I figured a thick cardboard will do the job um actually don't even need to use cardboard or or plywood because um when my I have this like particle board that I got when my sofas were delivered and I saved that um, because I figured I could use it for a craft later on and I just so happened to have a purpose for it should I need it. So the outside perimeter of the purse is done. Like this is, this is it for now. Um, let me back it up. This is it, the whole center portion of the purse is complete. Um, I could have probably moved this over just a tad, but I'm going to put the, I could have moved this over a little bit, but I'm gonna put the, the hardware right here. I think that's about center, yeah. So right here is about center, and I think it's gonna be a good size purse. Um, it's supposed to be like a weekend bag, so like an, a small overnight bag or something. And I just realized that there's a stain right here, and I would have flipped it to the other side had I known. But uh, there's nothing I can do about that, so maybe I can like buff it out with something. I have no idea. If it doesn't come out, then I'll probably sew like a tag or something right there. Like a Serena label. Okay, so now it's time to baste this to this i can use pins if i wanted to because there is no um i'm covering the vinyl so you won't see the holes if i put this on there but i do have quilters basting spray so i'm wondering if i should baste it instead i have this so i'm wondering if i should spray baste this on first then sew it on um i almost feel like i should do that so I'm going to go ahead and spray this on, let it dry, and then start attaching the sides. This is the point where I feel like if this comes goes on nicely, even if the lining looks like crap, I know that I have a purse. I haven't ordered the finding for the handles yet, simply because I felt like if it didn't work out, it would be a complete waste of time So, or and money. So if this works out tonight, then I'm going to order the 
I'm going to order the hardware before I go to bed. Okay, so it is basted on there. I'm just smoothing it out and allowing it to dry. And I honestly think that this is a step that shouldn't be skipped simply because um, sometimes when you layer two fabrics like this, if the center is not like adhered down, sometimes the fabric might shift and there might be a separation between the two where it looks like there's two layers. And I think that if you adhere it, whether you use fabric adhesive or a quilting spray because the basting spray would wash out if you were to put it on a quilt you put it in the wash and it'd come off but because this is not going to be washed it'll keep the layers together also i'm thinking once this is completed i will use some scrap wool to test out some never wet spray to protect the finish since it is going to be a purse and i won't be able to wash this purse so while this dries i'll get my machine set up and ready to sew the pieces on and this is why i find the spray to be so important because the the pieces are not moving um as individuals they're like moving together as a solid piece and uh that makes things a little bit easier when you can't use pins and just to be clear this is nerve-wracking because i want this to work so bad I've been wanting a round purse for a really long time and I use my hair dryer as a prop in photos but to have one of my own especially if this one is so simple because I do, I do get to skip a lot of steps using a sturdier fabric plus how cool would it be to have like a outfit with matching hat and purse like screaming Okay, so it's going to need a light pressing, but I think we can finally say I have a purse so I can order findings for it. Uh, the purse feet look really cute, so I have to get gold findings. If I can get everything in gold, I will. I decided that even though this feels very, um, it feels like it'll hold its shape. However, once I press everything out, I'm going to interface the lining with a very heavy interfacing but I'm also going to reinforce this part with that heavy um, cardboard, particle board, whatever board that I have because um, I just want everything to pop. Like I can't press the seams out too much because of the vinyl. So I feel like adding some rigidity will keep it from like not looking pressed. Okay, so this is the cardboard I was telling you about. It's it's really hard you can't bend it um, but it's not wood so I'm going to use the jigsaw to cut this out I'm gonna cut two of these it has a seam allowance so I'm gonna cut the five-eighths of this off using the center ring I made the bottom with only half inch so we're gonna see how that goes together okay so now it's time to cut the lining I actually found this fabric in my scrap bin So now it's time to cut the main lining pieces. I am not following the grain on this. It is really important for me to get as much out of this fabric as possible. And since it's being interfaced anyway, I don't see the need. As long as I'm careful about not stretching it, which it's a pretty stiff cotton. So I think it'll be fine. Um, I think it'll be okay to not follow the grain. So I'm using some quilting spray to spray onto the foam that I cut out. I ended up interlining or interfacing the inside of the main pieces with some craft foam to give it that rigidity I was looking for. I felt like the particle 
cardboard would have been a bit too much and made it hard to sew because it just wouldn't have been able to flex under the machine. So I went with this instead. Because I am no longer using the board to give the side structure, I'm only cutting out the bottom support. So it's just going to be a quick rectangle and I'm going to sit that on the bottom of the bag. So this is the difference um, that it makes. I'll pop in a picture of it without any foam or any um, cardboard on the bottom. The cardboard is a perfect fit. Like it's so snug inside of there. Like it can, I could hardly get it in there. So it's going to stay. Um, there's several layers protecting the corners from the outside. So I don't have to worry about it cutting through. And the foam, you can see the foam on the inside. So now I can work on the lining. In fact, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just use the silver rivets that I have to include the Serena signature because I made the mistake of forgetting to place that in my order when I ordered the other hardware. And I don't want to spend any more money on this project. It's supposed to be a scrap project and I spent $30 on hardware. So um, I think that's enough spending for this project and I'm just gonna use the silver rivets to put my signature on there. So we're gonna cut this open and then cut the triangles and slip the pocket through to the other side. At this point in the project, I was so excited. I'm currently using some more scrap fabric. This was actually the fabric I used for my daughter's second birthday dress. So this entire project will just be so special, no matter how it turns out. Of course, you can never have too much logo. So I'm thinking about putting this leather patch right here on the inside. Okay guys, so this is the final progress shot before I complete the bag and do a full like tour, I guess, of the bag or complete walkthrough of it being completed. But I had to replace the rivets because the rivets I had are too short. As you can see, they're not staying in. I ordered some new rivets and I have to return all the hardware from before. Oop, trying to get these to focus. But there we go that is the new rivet and let me show you what the old one looks like beside it oops so that is the old rivet oh. and that is the new rivet so I will be working from the inside, putting the cap on the inside of the rivet, like so. Then hammering does damage the rivet on the top, so it's a, it's gonna be a little squished. Uh, so I try to put down some fabric to kind of cushion it a little. And then you just tap it away. I'm sewing the lining onto the zipper tape with a slip stitch. The lining is a little loose, a lot of loose on this bag because I didn't attach it to the seam allowance of the outer fabric like I was supposed to. And that's because I was still on the fence on how I was going to give this bag structure. I was back and forth like you saw in the other clip about using that hard cardboard. So I left it. Um... I left it free so that way I could add structure in if I needed it. Also, I'm talking here about the line, the handle that next time I would attach the handle, giving I knew what kind of handle I wanted to put on there, that I would attach the handle by sewing it on instead of depending on the rivets. I did add a, a quick stitch across um, one of the handles by uh, really bending it to get it under the foot of the machine. And then I put the rivets in so that way I wouldn't have to depend solely on the rivets to keep the handle on. 
so the bag is finally completed I'm gonna show you the inside and you can see I have a little zipper pocket in there this is the first time I've ever done a pocket like that so it's very similar to a bound buttonhole and I thought that was really cool and it looked very clean um, I have a leather Serena patch with my second design, uh, the 1940s style hairstyle with the 1950s machine. Very mix matchy like me. There's a slip pocket. And then I did add like another floral pocket for no reason. But you can see how loose the lining is um, on the bottom, how it's like bunched up in there. But that's okay because it's the inside and no one will really see it. So I'm going to show you it all zipped up and we're going to go over the exterior. So this is the front. It was intended to be the back, the one with the little patch on there. Uh, but now it's the front because I really like the patch. And here is the new back of it. And there's that. Now we're going to look at the bottom. And we have our gold purse feet. And that's pretty much it that is my first purse thank you guys so much for watching i truly appreciate all the love and support that i get here on youtube and instagram don't forget to follow me there at serena underscore as well as like and comment below um i hope you enjoy this please let me know would you make a bag have you already made a bag what kind of handles would you put on your bag i look forward to reading your answers bye